yield back. Chair, thanks. The gentlelady, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from Louisiana, Representative Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Administrator, thank you for being here. I want to make note, Mr. Chairman, we've discussed Hurricane France, excuse me, Hurricane uh, Helene and Hurricane Milton. We have not discussed Hurricane Francine. Administrator, I want to thank you for coming down to Louisiana for that, but I want to tell you why we, we're not talking about that today. We're not talking about that today because the citizens of Lafourche and Terrebonne Parish, where that hurricane made landfall, imposed both a sales tax and a property tax on themselves, have invested nearly a billion dollars in building hurricane protection. We are in an interim phase of protection. We have built an 11-foot levee. Storm surge for Hurricane Francine was 11 feet. If that levee had not been there, if we had not done what we did, we would be having a very different hearing today. Um, Administrator, I want to ask you a quick question. Um, there, there are rumors, reports that, uh, that FEMA is having discussions with the Department of Treasury about using ARP funds, American Rescue Plan funds, to help out with recovery. Is that accurate? Uh, so uh, with the National Flood Insurance Program at this moment, we uh, are outpacing our payments, over $800 million in payments it, from the National Flood Insurance Program. So y'all are having discussions about using American Rescue Plan funds for recovery? We are not using American Rescue Plan. There, there's no discussions about doing that? Not for FEMA using American Rescue Plan. Okay, okay, because there were reports that FEMA was having discussions about no. using those. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Now, something else I'd like for you to clarify. Um, there, there's been a lot of discussion about FEMA's uh, emergency uh, food and shelter program mm -hmm. and, 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 and how it's handled. And um, I, I just, number one, that's a FEMA program. Number two, that is funded with taxpayer dollars. Um, and so whenever folks say that, well, no, 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 you got to understand it's a different program. These are all taxpayer dollars. And what you do is you triage and you're, or you prioritize what is needed, what's most important, and that's where we need to focus. I mean, do you agree with that? Uh, the Shelter and Services Program is a program that was directed by Congress for FEMA to administer. Yes. At right. The and so these are all federal dollars. taxpayer dollars. And so if we need taxpayer dollars in a higher priority area, it would make sense to take funds from a lower priority area. What, what, what I'm really struggling with is, as I understand, is that in North Carolina, for example, where I visited, you could have a flood or disaster victim that can get a check for $750. Yet when I go through and I look at the programs and resources that are available to a citizen of a different country that came illegally into the United States, under the FEMA administrative administered program using nonprofits, you could be eligible for housing, for food, for transportation, for health care costs, and others. I was able to come, looking at the very documents that these nonprofits were using, I was able to get to a figure in excess of $10,000 for an individual. Let me make note again, that is a citizen of a foreign country. How would I explain to a taxpayer that a taxpayer, a citizen of the United States, is eligible for $750, yet a citizen of a foreign country under your agency is still eligible for, for assistance of $10,000? How, how would I explain that to somebody? Congressman, the, uh, the resources that are available to people impacted by disasters are a variety of resources, and that $750 payment is just to cover those immediate needs they are eligible for 42,500 in fiscal year 24 for housing assistance and 42,500 uh, for other needs assistance. Those are the programs that are available to people that were impacted by disasters. So, so it's very clear, it's very clear that today, and, and I just visited North Carolina just a few weeks ago, it's very clear to me that there are folks that are in need right now. I, I, the disparity that exists in that a citizen of a foreign country that broke the law and came here illegally is, is they can get a plane ticket paid for, they can get a hotel room paid for, um, I think 200 and something bucks a night if I remember right, and in, in, in uh, some of the areas of, of uh, uh, maybe around Midland, Texas, somewhere around there. Uh, again, healthcare, food, clothing. We have citizens of our own country that I engaged in North Carolina weeks and weeks after the disaster that have some of those same needs. It, it, this is ridiculous. It really is. And I understand that, that all of these decisions aren't yours, but, but Administrator, you understand the ridiculousness of this situation that we're not helping our own citizens, yet we're out there using our own taxpayer dollars when we have a debt right now of $35 trillion as a nation, and we're, and we're helping out citizens of other countries when we're not even meeting the fundamental needs of our own citizens. 
This really is an unacceptable situation. And I think if I were in your situation, yes, I understand you're asking for $100 billion, but I think that we should be looking and asking for reprogramming opportunities because we've got to prioritize the limited resources that our nation has and focus upon our own citizens. I yield back.